interessante, perdiamo un po' del verdicchio uh, proprio de, de, del principe adesso. Let's talk about the real protagonist here, which is the vine. Uh, qui siamo al San Michele. Sì. Giuseppe ha just said that uh, right now we are in the San Michele vineyard, which is the Ferrari of his vineyard, is the number one uh, single vineyard not only owned by the winery Bonci, but is recognized as the best single vineyard in the area. So he said, it's an old vine, uh, it's about 40, 45 year old. Uh, it's very small, but we are 100% south, southeast exposed, which gives the best exposure for the grape. So there is no question that the San Michele single vineyard is the best. Ma nell'azienda quanti ettari ha in totale? Sono 35 ettari. E, e San Michele quanto grande è? Sono 4 ettari. So e said, the Bonci winery owns 35 ettari, which means about 70 acres, but the San Michele is only 4, 4 and a half ettari, so like uh, 9 9 and a half acres. So it's very small compared to the rest of the of the of the winery. So the production of the San Michele is very limited. Quante quante bottiglie si fanno qua di San Michele? San Michele sono varia dalle 25.000 alle 30.000. So we we average in terms of production of the San Michele single vineyard uh, depending on the vintage from uh, 15 to 20,000 bottles but mm, it, mm, what it was explaining is that right now it keeps with the San Michele label only and exclusively the upper part of the hill so the San Michele gets maximum to 10,000 bottles and then he used the rest of the vineyard to blend it into the other single vineyard perché avete vigneti anche con altre esposizioni just says something extremely interesting don't forget, we have only one grape to play with. So those differences says, yes, this one is the vineyard with the best exposure, is the vineyard with the best soil condition, is the vineyard with the best microclimate that make this five-star wine. But we also have vineyard north exposed on purpose. We also have vineyard west exposed on purpose. Why? Because we are looking for differences. Those vineyards on the other side, they are north exposure, so they develop less body and more acidity, which we need either to balance the lower part of this hill or to make the sparkling one. Because they make a sparkling verdicchio that needs an higher acidity at the beginning, otherwise it will be flat and flabby and, and with no backbone. So in these 90 acres, purposely, they have different condition to make seven different wine with the same grape. Avviciniamoci un attimo. So the training system here is Guyot. We have seen the Guyot in other regions of Italy. We have seen the Guyot in Piedmont. If you uh, uh, click on Tenuta la Meridiana, you will see the Guyot. But uh, Giuseppe just told me that before was doppio capovolto, double twisted. Don't ask me to translate it because it's way too complicated. Uh, quindi qui il Guyot si adatta. So he said that this system here is extremely important because in the past the doppio capovolto, the double twisted, forgive my translation, was giving uh, uh, clusters a different height. With the Guyot now, what they're trying to get is all the grape at the same level, all the grape equally distant from the soil. Però noto che il, eh, vanno tutte, sono tutte volte verso, verso l'alto. Like I've noticed that uh, we have the old vine here and the fresh branch, they're all going on the top. Allora, questo perché? So, that's very interesting. Uh, he said that by nature the vine, the, 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 the physical composition of the vine, pushes the lymph, the nutrition, the nutrients, that absorb from the soil always 
against gravity. The, the tree tends to push it to the extreme against gravity. So, if we twist this arm on the other side and we stretch it this way, as a matter of fact, the length, we will not get to the bottom. We will remain in the upper part because it will feel more pressure here. So twisting the arm this way, even the last cluster gets the same amount of nutrients than the first cluster gets. Fascinating. Very interesting. I said, this grape, the Verdicchio, very big cluster and very dense with one wing, but even the wing doesn't move. If you click on the Marchese Biscardo, you look at the, um, at the Corvina, the wing is very loose. Uh, here in this case, the wing is very dense. And it says, Nicola, this is very important because being the cluster so packed, if it rains or when it rains, it gets wet and the, the water goes inside, but the wind doesn't have the chance to blow through it. So it might generate mud. The, the grape might get diseases like oidio or peronospera, which force to spray chemicals. Therefore, it's very important to have this amazing exposure that prevents this naturally. In this condition, there is the grass on the floor, it's not being plowed, so the grass absorbs any potential humidity, keeping the grape clean, and the perfect exposure makes sure that there is not going to be that much rain and if, if it rains, the wind that comes in will keep it dry and keep it very healthy without chemicals. Vedo che, so I said, they look different. Uh, this cluster here from this one that was covered by, by leaves and he said, yes, the Verdicchio is a very delicate vine and a very delicate grape. So we purposely leave some leaves on top that they will kind of hide. So some clusters are more exposed, some other clusters are more hidden. One of the characteristics is that verdicchio, verdicchio means the little green. Verde means, verde is green. So verdicchio is the little green because even if the grape is ripe, it's still green. But if they get overexposed, get some brown reflection, sun, sunburn. So uh, it doesn't, doesn't ruin the quality, but we want to have a good mix of cluster cover and cluster exposed. So there is not overly tanned and not overly green, a nice mix. Andiamo a conoscere uh, gli altri componenti della, della famiglia e dell'azienda? Andiamo su? Yeah. Let's go meet the other uh, um, protagonist in the family and in the company. We go back to the winery.